no matter what kind of photographer you are, you absolutely must have this Photoshop and Lightroom plugin bundle. Hey everybody, if you didn't know, my name is Austin James Jackson. I'm a professional landscape photographer based here in the beautiful Southern Utah area. In today's video, I am talking about my absolute favorite Lightroom slash Photoshop plugin bundle. I think every photographer needs to own this plugin slash plugin bundle, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, and it's something that I'm using on so many of my photos. Now, I've got tons of other videos on my channel talking about this software. I want to be very straightforward and clear. This is not an ad. I'm not getting paid to say this. I come up with one YouTube video a week. This is the YouTube video for this particular week. I want to show you guys this software. If you've been following my channel for long, you've definitely seen me talk about this before because I use it all the time. If you haven't, then welcome. I'm ready and excited to show you this really cool software. If you are gonna purchase the software, after you check out this video, please make sure to use that link down below in the description. That gets me a really small kicker. I know you're thinking I'm making money, so I just wanna promote this product to you so that you buy it. Totally not true. Um, I'm not making that much money if you buy the product, and there is thousands of different companies that I could get an affiliate link for. So if there was a better product, I would simply be making a video on that better product. This product is one of the best, one of my absolute favorites. I wanna talk about it today. Uh, it's gonna be great, even though I'm just a landscape photographer, it's going to be great for you guys, no matter what kind of photography you do. And I'm so incredibly excited to show you this software. Let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to show you guys why I think every photographer needs to own the Topaz Image Quality Bundle. It is the absolute best Photoshop and Lightroom and whatever editor you're using plugin in the industry. You need to have this bundle. Let me show you why. So as I mentioned, the software that I think you ought to get that works as a Lightroom Photoshop plugin, or really it works with a lot of other software editors as well. Um, I think if you use things like Capture One or DxO or things like that, I believe these will also work as a plugin for those softwares as well, but do check on that before you buy it. Uh, but anyways, it is the Topaz Image Quality Bundle, not to be confused with Topaz Photo AI, which is also a great piece of software. I've got a video comparing the bundle to Photo AI. Long story short, I'd recommend the bundle if you want uh, the highest quality um, fixes or whatever you would call it for your images. And I'm gonna show you why in this video. Now on my channel, I have a few different videos covering denoise, gigapixel, and sharpen AI, which I will link when we get to that part of the video. But I just wanted to make a all-encompassing video here talking about all three and why I think you should have them as a photographer, even if you are a not a landscape photographer. In fact, some of these softwares are gonna be great for things like wildlife, portrait, cityscape, uh, whatever you like to take photos of, these softwares will work great. So uh, I wanna show you first of all how easy it is to launch into the Topaz apps. I already have them open with photos just to make this video process a little faster. But if I was gonna launch a photo, all you would need to do here in Lightroom is find the photo that you want and you can control click and go to edit in and then you have Denoise Gigapixel and Sharpen AI down here. Super quick and easy to launch. If you're in Photoshop, you can do the same thing on the top menu bar uh, where you have like filter options that'll allow you to open it straight into there. So let's go ahead and talk about Sharpen AI first. Now, Sharpen AI is really cool. And what Sharpen AI does is it essentially sharpens your image. So let me show you the full size image here. And that's fine. So this full size image, I missed the focus point. Now I did this on purpose because I wanted to grab this uh, photo to show you how the software works. But uh, I know a lot of you guys in the field and there's gonna be undoubtedly some photographers that will say, well, you're a bad photographer if you miss the focus. Problem is, Every once in a while, anyone who goes out and shoots a lot and shoots in tough conditions outside or um, maybe you're shooting weddings or whatever it is, you're going to miss the focus every once in a while. And maybe you've got a great shot from a portrait that you took that you can't take again or you've got a crazy conditions you got outside where you just missed the focus. You might need to fix that. If that's the case, uh, Topaz Sharpen AI is going to be your best friend. I honestly cannot believe how nice this software is. So let's go ahead and zoom into 200%. You can see we're not sharp here. It is pretty blurry. So uh, I'm just going to go, when you load into the software, basically it's going to load up like this. Now, if you want to see the whole tutorial on how to use Sharpen AI, uh, I've got a tutorial video on YouTube already that I will link here. 
So when I zoom in here, you can see that it is definitely out of focus. Uh, I botched the focus pretty bad on this one. I think I was using autofocus. It was a little foggy, as you can see, and I just missed the focus point. So if I wanted to recover this image, this software is going to be my best bet. It's the best software I've ever seen to recover blurry images. If you guys have seen a better one, drop it down below in the comments. I'd love to check it out. Anyways, you're going to load in here. You've got options for the sharpen model as well as the model parameters. Best thing to do with a sharpen model, uh, you can click this here, which is going to automatically select motion blur normal. However, um, I find that rather than using AI to select the sharpen model, you should select, select the sharpen model based on what your photo needs. My photo, for example, is out of focus, very blurry. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to let it load out here. I'm also going to check the box next to model parameters. That's going to allow the software to automatically choose how much blur and noise uh, will be removed or suppressed from the image. And then it's going to update. You'll see the bar down here. It might take a second, depending on how large your image is and how fast your computer is. Well, to determine how quickly it loads out. You can see right now it's loading in real time as I'm talking here, this is about how fast it is. However, I'm shooting with 60 megapixel images, which are huge, and I'm using like a 2015 or so, 2014 maybe iMac. A little older computer, but it ends up working out just fine. Now, if you move this view around, it has to re-render because all it's rendering is what is on my screen right now. And you can see up here, I'm just looking at a small section. Now that it's loaded out, I can slide this. You're, you want to make sure that you're in this view, which is called split view. You're going to do that on all three uh, softwares here. And you can see recovers quite a bit of detail. Now, of course, is it perfect? No. Uh, I would have rather had this shot in focus in the field, but something like this is definitely going to pass the eye test, especially when you're zoomed out. And if it was the only shot that I had, it would look good enough to get the job done. Sharpen AI is great. Uh, it obviously works a little bit better if your photo is not so gosh dang blurry um, coming right out of the camera. Like I said, check out my tutorial video on Sharpen AI uh, on my channel. I uh, de-blur a image that's not quite as blurry and the results come out out really, really well. But as you can see for really blurry images, it does quite a nice job sharpening all of the edges here and bringing this detail back in there. That's how to use sharpen AI. Let's jump to uh, denoise. Now when denoise loads out, you can see it automatically selected the AI model. Now when you look at this, it's honestly done a pretty average job of denoising. You can see we're still loaded with noise in here in the trees. Now it's selecting standard, which I don't really like for this photo because you can see it's really noisy. It's only shot at ISO 3200, but I brought it up about three stops. I brought the exposure up about three stops in post-processing. So I really brought out that noise by brightening it. I like this photo of myself carrying this tripod, but it just looks terrible and noisy. So I'm going to go to severe noise instead. Um, and you can see this one loaded quite a bit faster. And now I'm silky smooth, just like that, guys, literally. All I did was load in here to denoise. I loaded my photo, and I simply just checked severe noise. Just like that, it looks great. Now, you can go in and make some adjustments. These are the things that the model preferences automatically selected. If you felt like it was looking like a little too smooth uh, and a little too perfect, you could, of course, go in and drop the remove noise down just a little bit, let that re-render out. Um, Denoise has so many great features. I love using this as a landscape photographer. A lot of times I'm shooting at high ISOs, you know, landscape photography uh, for me isn't the traditional stick your tripod down and call it a day. For me, a lot of times I'm shooting on the run, shooting on the go, handheld, not always using a tripod. Uh, and maybe sometimes I'm even shooting wildlife where I need to speed up my shutter speed. So I've got that high ISO. You can see, once again, it just looks fantastic. Of course, you could combine these two softwares, Denoise and Sharpen, together to really get a nice looking image. Uh, you, of course, have some options down here to recover original detail and do color noise reduction as well, which you can do here. There's a lot more you can do in Denoise, but this pretty much covers the basics here. Again, check out my video on Denoise where I show you uh, kind of the ins and outs of how to use some of the special features in Denoise, but it works great. Again, this image is shot at ISO 3200, and I brought it up about three stops. So um, that would be equivalent to a lot more than 3200 ISO, but that image is looking really great. Now, last software that you're going to use would be Gigapixel. Now, I'll be completely honest with you guys. I don't use Gigapixel as much as a landscape photographer, um, but if you are trying to upsize your images, you might use Gigapixel a lot more. Now, I shoot on a Sony a7R4. It comes out with huge files. This photo that we're looking at here is a drone shot. As you can see, I will go to fit this. 
It's a drone shot, shot on a 20 megapixel drone. The file's a lot smaller. Now let's say I wanted to print this thing really big. The problem is when I print it, it's gonna look pretty pixelated. So what you can do is come in here and you can resize your image. You can go by scale, width, or height. As you do that, it will change your image and make it larger. It'll create those pixels for you. Um, if you just wanna make it larger, like say that you're uploading some old digital film scans or something like that that you wanna make larger, you can just do scale 4X or 6X or 2X, or you can even half the size of it, whatever you wanna do. You've got some options to use the AI model here. You can um, decide which one of these you want by hovering over it. Usually standard is good. And then you can adjust the settings to suppress noise and remove blur. This is gonna do similar to what Denoise and Sharpen do, but it's not as good to do them here. So if you're thinking you can just buy one app um, and save some money, I would not recommend it because I don't really like suppressing noise or removing blur in Gigapixel. I prefer to do that in Sharpen or Denoise. Um, and then yeah, you can adjust things. You can do the width, you can do the height. So you can change the pixels per unit um, as well as the output height. You can see it's going to 97 inches right now, um, but you can do that to whatever you want. And then of course you would zoom back in, you would see the before and after on the left and on the right. I think right now we're doing a, yeah, we're doing a four X. So we'll let that load out. We can take a look at that again. This is real time here. It's loading pretty fast. Uh, this is a smaller file, but again, on an older computer here. And just like that, you and I might actually zoom out. That's like, we're too close, a little too close. Let's zoom out and look at like this area right over here. Let that load out. You can see every time you move, it does have to re-render, uh, which is totally understandable. It is a little bit annoying if you wanna move around the image, but it is what it is. You can see down here, we are four timesing this. So we're going from 54, 64 by 36, 40 to like 21,000 by 14,000 creating a lot larger image. Like I said, for me personally, I don't use this a lot. If you're going to skip getting one of these softwares, I would not get Gigapixel, but it, a lot of times Topaz will bundle the three softwares together, which is gonna allow you to get a little bit better price and get all in the bundle. And I have used Gigapixel before. I do use it occasionally. I just don't use it as much. You can see on the left is the before image. On the right is after the upsize. Looking a lot better um, for upsizing and I think that this would look great as a print. So let's go ahead and get into the details here. Denoise AI is gonna run you $79.99, as is Sharpen AI. Both of those are $79.99 each. Gigapixel AI is $99.99. You can get them all in a bundle for like just shy of $260. Uh, that's US dollars. And you occasionally will be able to get a sale if you look around on their website to get the whole bundle for like 200 or so. So really like these softwares, really, really recommend all three of them. I think they're absolutely essential for all photographers and you need to have them in your tool belt. I wanna thank you so much for checking out this video. Like I said, love the software. It is absolutely amazing. Use my link if you're gonna pick it up. It helps to support my channel and let me keep making these free videos. If this was helpful for you and you are a photographer, even if you're not a landscape photographer, um, I do post weekly videos where I talk about different photography concepts with the ultimate goal of helping you become a better photographer. So make sure that you go ahead and like and subscribe, support my channel, come back every week for for the helpful video, or at least I hope helpful video that I'm posting every week. Alrighty, we will see you guys next time. Have a good one, bye-bye.